love it. No, I think that, um, you know, you have to, you know, learn and, and really enjoy paying attention to the details, you know, in this business. Um, I think I was, I, I read an article and I actually did a, a, a video about this too, about uh, five famous people you didn't know had a license. One okay. of them was uh, Tom Clancy, you know, Tom Clancy. Yeah, let's say my uh, grandfather loved his Tom Clancy novels. Mm -hmm. He was an insurance agent. I did not know that. Okay. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, um, The Hunt for Red October. Yeah. He was inspired to write that by clients he had who were in the Navy, who were like Navy submarine officers. <laughs> Isn't that something? I, I believe it. <laughs> yeah. You never yeah. know the people that you meet. <laughs> yeah, you know, so 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 if you if you have you know you have that that spark you know and you 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 can pull that inspiration pretty much from from anywhere and um, he said that one of the things that made him successful because apparently he was really good uh, mm -hmm. one of the things that made him successful was that attention to detail that you just mentioned. Oh, absolutely. You know, really well, I think that insurance in and of itself is like. It, most people start out in sales, right? So you kind of start with like a either service or sales mentality, but in either case, you don't really have to like, I think it's still a lot of drive for like, you gotta sell policies, you gotta sell policies, but I think consumers are becoming so much more knowledgeable now that it's forcing those like old school agents that could just like sell a policy like that to really know more and right. like, I think consumers nowadays just want to be educated too. They don't just, they not only want coverage, they want yes. to know like, why am I actually, like, why do I need this? What does this actually do for me? It's not enough just to sell it anymore, which is a great consumer mentality change as well. Yeah, absolutely. And especially with, especially now, you know, uh, with the social media, you know, which, which we just talked about. I think we talked, we talked about that, you know, people asking, not even necessarily for the business card, they're asking for your social media, but people are actually going online, you know, they're, they're researching things as well. And, and even for, you know, someone who's looking to get into the, get into the industry, you know, they can go online and kind of research some of the statistics. I think, um, I think some of them are, are a little bit, a little bit low, like the, some of the income metrics are probably a little bit low, you know, for our business that, that I've seen, you know, well, but, think, you know, depending on like, you know, if it's one of those sales behemoths that like has a high turnover, then it's a yes. little versus like, I think if you decide to make it your career, you know, and really commit to it, especially five years, I think that's when you really see a lot of the, I think two years is the first milestone, 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 milestone. Yeah. And then yes. <laughs> like two. It could be a milestone. It could be a milestone. Mile maybe. Oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like two years and then five years and then like it just keeps building on that absolutely absolutely Thank i agree so so coming from coming from let me see your your grandfather was also an agent right <laughs> yes so talking about how the insurance industry changes it is yes. a, if you look at my family how insurance has changed even from like when my grandfather was an insurance agent to my dad to myself it is completely different so my grandfather was a life insurance agent. So nice. back in like the 60s, 70s. Okay. So the way that, um, so, you know, on your life insurance, you traditionally pay like monthly, or you can even pay weekly. So he was actually a week. So he would sell a policy, like educate his clients. And then he was actually the one to go door to door, like week to week. I think it's week to week, but don't quote me. I know it's at least month to month, but I think it was actually like weekly to collect all of those payments. And so he was in charge, but kind of think like a paper route, but for life insurance, which sounds like crazy to say, but it kind of is like back in the day. So he would even tell stories about like, I mean, he'd have these clients for years, like somebody not being able to pay their insurance payment. And then rather than letting the, the cancellation, you know, of the insurance go through, like, he gave my grandfather like a teapot so that he could like pay for his insurance. <laughs> so I was like, really? Wow. And then, so when my dad started, um, so, so my grandfather was life insurance specifically. My dad in, started in the eighties, I think 81. It was right when he got married to like 80, 81 was when he went into insurance. Okay. So all state back in the day, I don't, I, 
Has anyone ever told you this that how they used to sell insurance for PNC? Because there weren't like 1 800 like call centers that you could go to. My dad literally had a book that he would carry around with him, knock on doors, and then, okay, so you are this old, you have this many accidents, and you have this car. This is your rate. So it was like an entire rate book that he would uh, bring to. And he had the coveted spots of being in a Cloverleaf Mall. So Allstate had like a little booth kiosk. That Cloverleaf he, Mall. Wow. You're taking yeah, it back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Mall. So like that's where clients could um, make their payments, where they could sign up on a policy. So he would like people would want to work on Saturdays because that's when a lot of people would buy insurance policies and you would be their agent. So he, I think he worked there for like a couple of years. It was like right outside of like Sears or inside. I can't remember if it was inside the Sears or like outside the Sears. It was this like little Allstate kiosk that was apparently like huge back in the day. And then obviously it just keeps evolving now to like automatic payments and like messaging via Instagram. It's just Yeah, no, it's crazy. It's like, you know, you get a text message or something, you know. Um, so for, for those who, who are unfamiliar with, with what a mall is, a mall is a place that people used to go to visit different stores <laughs> and make purchases. <laughs> Back when you had to worry, hey, I wonder, is this in stock? Like, can I go get this? That's right. That's right. You have to go like four different places to get this your shoe size or something, you know? Yeah. And you said, you mentioned uh, Sears. You said it might have been in Sears. Yeah, I think it was Sears specifically. Sears. And Sears is a store that used to have this catalog. It was a book. <laughs> it was a book and you could order things out of that book. You wouldn't go online. You had to either call or there was like a slip in the back that you could fill out and when I was young, we used to circle the things that we wanted for Christmas. Yep. You, right? <laughs> okay. I, was say, I know exactly what you're talking about with like, I would wait for like the Toys R Us, like little, you know, like inserts in the paper even, which is all, I, I guess they don't have Yeah, more, yeah. yeah. This, that's just a little history lesson for those that, that you know, know Amazon. You yeah, know, or, for those that are, <laughs> right. <laughs> all of us that had to like wait and find something we really liked because we can just google it immediately and that's find. right that's, that's really right fun. but man how, how things how things have changed i mean i feel like you know we, we might be a little spoiled now with uh with our ability uh particularly particularly as as people who are working in this industry we're, we're used to doing things electronic we're used to you know many uh, electronic application um if you need a document you can e-sign it you know, mm -hmm. we're used to to all of those luxuries. And you think, you know, back in the day, you know, folks used to have to go around door to door and either carry that big book. I mean, you're getting a workout yeah, or workout. Going around collecting, collecting that premium. I remember my grandmother telling me stories about the insurance guy coming to collect premium. It might have been oh, your granddad. Really? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> right. Yeah. Very well being. I don't know. <laughs> May, may be, may be. So with with your, your history, right, joining the industry, right, granddad is in insurance, mm -hmm. father's in insurance. Do you think that made you more inclined to go into uh, the industry from a, from a career standpoint? Or was it something that kind of turned you off initially? Initially, definitely a turn off because I wanted to go do something different, didn't want to I'm a very competitive person, so I didn't want to have that like direct comparison necessarily. Right. But then it turned out like, especially when I got married and had to be, you know, start making, bringing home the bacon, decided right. to <laughs> give it a shot. And, you know, I think at that point I said I was going to commit like two years to it. Mm -hmm. And within those two years, like, fell in love with it. And, and here, here we are, five years later. Yep. Here we are and have a no, like, say no regrets say I love I do love having my own insurance agency though that is fantastic <laughs> yes yes it is it is so so do you feel like when you took the test right you, okay. you were working as a customer service representative so you weren't issuing the policy you weren't licensed at that time yep. nope. do you feel like that experience prepared you for the test or do you feel like you or did you still have to study and, and prepare well, so I still had to study and prepare, but one of the other agents in the office actually had the best advice on how to prepare for the test. Okay, and give it to us. Yeah, so what you do, he's like, Katie, 
just go to the definitions in the back, learn the definitions, what they mean, and like what, you know, if it's in like a lot, like learn the laws, like, like just learn that. As long as you learn that, you can usually kind of decipher where everything goes. And he was absolutely right. It was, I spent hours going through the book as the studious person that I am, and then spent a couple of hours like doing the note cards and just learn, like getting more familiar with it too, not just like a dry definition, because what you're learning from this book might not be what the state, um, like you're gonna, you're not gonna see it verbatim. So you just have to be able to know what it actually is but you can figure it out from that. So that's what I always recommend for anybody that is interested in their PNC. Oh, and go to, <laughs> they do have, I did take this one. It was like, I don't know if it was like a four hour or eight hour course, I forget. Um, okay. By the big, so the big I. And um, so the Independent Insurance Association yeah. of Virginia. Yeah. And it was this, yeah. And it was one of those like prep courses, you know, to get used to it. I, I think, unfortunately, the instructor that I had has since retired, but he was freaking fantastic. He would, like, just look at the thing, say, like, look at whatever definition you're talking about, and then just tell a story about it. Like, like there was no PowerPoint. There was no nothing. He just was like, you know what I've seen? Like, <laughs> it was great. He had talked about this. He had talked about that information enough times, oh, right? Yeah. But he's just like, that's what this means. I, I let somebody borrow my book and I'm so peeved because I never got it back. And it had a lot of his like funny stories in the margins. Oh, wow. Uh, I know you got to get that back. You got to figure out how to get that back. You, I know, you, I do. You, you lift it too? Do you, do, you, are you, do you still communicate with them? No, I'm too kind. Miss oh. Lee. <laughs> Look, I guarantee if you get that book back, you can find another one on Amazon, I'm sure, or Google. <laughs> I'll just look on eBay. Maybe it's there for like $2. It's on eBay. I guarantee it's on eBay. If it's not, if it's not on Amazon, it's going to be on eBay. It's one, one of the two. Exactly. So, uh, <laughs> so you know, you, you took the, so, so taking the test, you know, that was a, a great tip. I just want to recap that. So mm -hmm. learning the definitions was key for you. Yeah. And that really helped you prepare. And then you mentioned the big, the big guy, the Independent Insurance Association of Virginia, uh, which also has great instructional classes as well that folks can take. Um, now, now I have a, a PNC license as well. I don't know <laughs> if we talked about that, but I have never used it. I have no carriers that I'm associated with or anything. So oh, the question okay. is, I did not know that actually. I knew you had your yeah, license. Yeah. No. I, had your I, I have I have life and health and I have PNC in Virginia. Okay. The, the question is, this is on the life and health side. I found that once I took the test, the information I got from the carriers was completely different. It was like a whole new batch of information. Is it like that with property and casualty as well? Yes, because everybody has like. It I mean, you're basically, much like in life and health, you're learning the definitions of what it is. But then each carrier has different underwriting requirements as to, and then what that coverage actually entails in one carrier might be different than a different carrier. Like, it's so the basics are there. Like, your comprehensive deductible and your collision deductible are the same thing. But then like transportation expenses, roadside service, like things like those little details and like Dwelling coverage and replacement cost can change from company to company. So a little bit yes and a little bit no. Um, Got you. Because okay. it's always, it's definitely, I mean, it's just like any place. Once you get your certification, you get to like, then you learn the next step. So it's definitely not right. once you get, once you have your certification, you still got to learn the next step. You don't, you're just able right. to now learn the next step, basically. <laughs> exactly. No, this is what I'm saying. Cause I'm yeah. like, don't, don't come to me for PNC information just cause I had, just cause I have a license. doesn't mean I know anything about it. I don't, I knew enough to take the test. <laughs> pass, it, pass the test. That was it. <laughs> Say, I can do like a little bit of term life insurance just for like people that are looking to get started. So I have my life in health, but uh -huh. I'm very adamant, but I don't do health. <laughs> I, gotcha. don't do it. I cannot read it. Like, I don't, don't know what to tell you. Like, I'm so sorry. Go elsewhere. <laughs> they